one of the most amazing things about God is God desires to reveal Himself to all of us. You know that God created man, Adam and Eve sinned, Adam and Eve no longer walked with God. God had a problem and God had an answer. You know what's amazing? God had a problem. He knew only He was the answer. So He made Him manifest Himself in the flesh, hung on the cross, died for our sins, that He might come back to Him. God so wants us to be by Him. And He not only created us, He made a way for us to come back to Him. See, that's God. See, um, salvation is not my plan or your plan. It's God's plan. God is sitting up there with myriads and myriads and myriads and myriads of angels. And He desires you and me. He desires to hang out with you and me so much that He sent His Son to die on the cross that we might come back to Him. And I know a lot of people believe that Jesus died on the cross that you might drive a Cadillac. But it's just not true. It's just not true. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people teach, a lot of people teach that the abundant life is just having a lot of things. But um, you know, you always have to um, uh, how do you say? You you have to always define the Bible with the Bible. So when you look at it, it says that John ten ten, that Jesus Christ said come that you might have life and life more abundantly. You got to look at the word life. Colossians 3, 4 says Jesus, Jesus is our life. Deuteronomy 30, somewhere in there, says God is our life. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the abundant life is to be full of God, not to have a caddy. You know, if you have a caddy, praise the Lord, drive it around if you want it, I'll take it. But the thing is, that's not the abundant life. The abundant life is to be full of God. And so the prostitutes on TV and their and their and their people in the pulpits have taught us that money is the is the whole thing. And if you have money, there's nothing wrong with having money. If you don't want your money, I'll take your money. You know, but that is not what it's about God. The abundant life is to be full of God. Jesus, the, you know, Revelation 5, 9 says that we are we were redeemed back to God by the blood. That is what's happening out here. We go back to God. You know, because um John, the revelator, he wrote John 10 10. And he must have got his own memo because he was on the deserted island, you know. He didn't have nothing on that island. So that was, that's not what it meant, but he still praised the Lord. Anyway, where am I at? Genesis 6 to 13. And, he, and, she, and she called the name of, oh, she called the name of, I just had the letters. That spoke to her, you are L, L of C, where you, Hagar called God the God that sees. So as God began to reveal his name, so to reveal his person to us, he first let us know that I see everything. That's the first thing that God wanted us to know about. That there's nothing that escapes my eye. There's no place you can hide from me. There's nothing you can do that I did not see. That's the first thing God wanted us to know about. And then we got Genesis 17.1. Abraham was 90 years old, 90 and 9 years old. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect or mature. And so the first thing God wants us to know is that God sees everything that we do. You're not going to trick God. You're not going to, you know, come around, save people, or come around your family with a big smile on your face, make like you did anything wrong. God saw you. And the second thing God wants you to know, He's the Almighty God. That there's nobody stronger than him. There is no power, there's no influence, there's no other God, there's no group of people that is stronger than God. I see everything, and I'm the strongest person you'll ever meet. That's it. So that's the second thing. Here we go. Um, this is 22:14. And you know, gang, let's fall in love with God if we do anything. Genesis 22:14. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. You guys read my notes thing on the word. Anyway. Jehovah Jireh. That is said to this day in, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And so Jehovah Jireh means that um, God is our provider. So we have that God can, can see everything, that He's the Almighty God, and He provides for us. So, he, so, so that's the God that we, we're serving today. Um, Exodus 3:14. I like this thing. 
It says, I'm just going to read through them, guys. You guys got the notes. And it said, God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, he said, Thus shalt you say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me unto you. And so, God sees everything. God is all powerful. God will meet all of our needs. That means we walk and breathe air because of God. If you can see, if you enjoy anything, it's because of God. If you can feel, if you can talk, it's God provided that for you. So it says God will provide us anything. And then it says, as he's talking to Moses, and Moses said, who are we going to say that sent you? Sent me. Me. He basically said, I sent you. That's good enough for you. Just tell them the God of heaven sent you. And there we go. Um, Exodus 6, 3. Abraham appeared unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by, name, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Jehovah means the self-existent eternal one. So we have the God that sees everything, who's all powerful, nobody stronger than him, that, can, that meets all of our needs, that is just who he is, that he's self-existent and eternal all by himself. You see, we need people to live. We need people to enjoy life. We need God to give us breath, but God needs nothing. Nobody, nobody goes up there and builds God a house, fixes his roof, brings food to his house. God is self-existent and he's eternal. There's no ending to God. Um, let me see. Exodus 15, 26. Say that thou wilt give and hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. And so we have, um, how do we go? Well, we have, uh, we have the God that sees everything, the God that provides. The God is just God by himself. The God that the Almighty God, the self-existent eternal one. Then it says, I am the Lord thy God that healed me. And you know, um, the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God heals. God provides. God sees. God will forever be the self-existent eternal one. And God will always be the Almighty. He never changes. And so there shouldn't be deficiency in the life of the believer. There shouldn't be deficiency in the life of the church. So we begin to see God for who He is. Exodus 17, 15. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. If you read this whole story, it's, it's um, the banner represents a victorious king that there is nothing that can defeat. There is no problem that you might have that God will be that God will be worried about. There is nothing that can defeat God. Okay. Um, this one everybody misses. Exodus 34, 14. Let's all turn to that. This one everybody misses. Whenever they teach the progressive names and titles of God, they miss this one. Are we there? Says, um, for thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. You know, they want to talk about all the other names of God, but God's name is, if you want to call God something, call him jealous. The Bible says God's name is jealous. God does not want you serving or worshiping other gods. God does not want you worshiping or serving your church or a pastor more than you serve him. God does not want you honoring anybody before him. God is a jealous God. You know, God is a very, but he's a loving, kind God, but he is a jealous God. Uh, let me see. Leviticus 20, verse 8. And this is God as he's slowly revealing himself to man. 